Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to install Nginx Proxy Manager on a Raspberry Pi. So before we even get started, I kind of want to explain what a proxy manager is, why it will be helpful to you, and then from there we'll go on and actually look through the install process. So this tool is great for people that are hosting web services on their local network. Uh, and by web service, it doesn't necessarily need to be a website. It could be something like Plex, it could be something like Jellyfin, which I just did a video on. Um, but the idea behind it is that you have web services that you'd like to connect to from outside of your network. So traditionally, what you'd have to do is you'd have to actually specify the domain name that you'd like to use and the port. So if you're using Plex, for example, their default port, I think, is 32400. Um, Jellyfins is 8096. But the idea behind it is that you would navigate to your domain. So in my case, it would be wondertech.net and then the port, say 32400 for Plex. And if I wanted to expose Plex, that's how I'd get to it. In that case, you're actually opening a bunch of different ports. So every time you want to expose a new web service, you have to open its port and then you're kind of managing it on a um, system by system basis as far as what ports are open. So I'm simplifying it, but that's the basic idea behind it. What a reverse proxy does is it actually sits in the middle of your web servers and the internet. And all you're doing is you're opening port 80 and 443 on that specific uh, reverse proxy server. And at that point, it's then routing all of the traffic back to your web servers. So using the examples that I used before, if we wanted to expose, say, Plex, or we wanted to expose Jellyfin, or even if we wanted to expose both of them, the way that you'd set it up is you'd set up that reverse proxy to connect back to those web servers based on a different domain. So plex.wondertech.net or jellyfin.wondertech.net. The idea behind it is you're specifying a different domain name, but then the reverse proxy is actually forwarding the traffic on to the correct server. So it might sound a little confusing, um, but we'll get to an example later on in this tutorial and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense at that time. Uh, but the idea is basically you're only exposing one server from your network rather than exposing multiple. So two things before we get started. I just wanted to say that there are written instructions in the description and they'll be very important for this because you're going to have to copy a Docker Compose file. So all of the information will be on the site. The second thing that I wanted to mention is if you're hosting something like a website where it gets a lot of traffic, you're probably better off using a device that has a little bit more horsepower than the Raspberry Pi does because everything will just function a little better. Uh, this works great on a Raspberry Pi, but if you have a ton of requests, you're probably better off setting up a Linux server, running Docker on that, and then installing Nginx Proxy Manager on that. It'll just run a little smoother. So to get started with the tutorial, it's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to install a few dependencies. And these dependencies are just there so that we can utilize the Docker Compose function. So as soon as that finishes installing, what you're going to do is you're going to create a Nginx uh, folder. And inside of that folder, you're going to create two files. You're going to create a config file and you're going to create a Docker Compose file. The config file, just paste the contents into it, and the same thing is true of the Docker Compose file. The contents of those files are in the written instructions in the description. After you finish creating those, what you're going to do is you're going to run a Docker Compose up command. And all that's doing is that's kind of fetching all the files that it needs, and it's starting that Docker container. This step will take some time, but as soon as that's done, we're going to run two more commands and what it's going to do is it's going to set it so that every time you restart your uh, Raspberry Pi, it will automatically start the Nginx container and it will automatically start the Nginx database. Once that's done, you need to restart your Raspberry Pi. When it's back up, you can SSH into it or you can log in however you're accessing your Raspberry Pi. But at that time, you're going to have to wait a little while. So you can run a command sudo docker ps if you want, or you can open Portainer. Uh, but the idea is that you're just checking the status of that Nginx container. So it's going to report as unhealthy. And when it's reporting as unhealthy, it's kind of booting up and it's going through everything that it needs to go through. Um, once it switches to healthy, you're good. You can navigate to it. But until then, you kind of have to just wait, give it some time. It'll probably take no more than about five minutes or so. But I do want to say that it's not going to be an immediate thing. 
At that point, what you can do is as soon as it's back up and it's reporting it's healthy, you can navigate to the IP address of your Raspberry Pi uh, and port 81. So port 81 is what we configured in our Docker Compose file. Once you're there, you have to ensure that you open ports 80 and 443 on your router to your Raspberry Pi. So this is going to be different for everybody since everybody has different uh, routers. But in the written instructions, I included a link that will show you how to open ports on various different routers. Obviously, it won't account for all of them, but hopefully it will help. So as soon as you're done opening those ports, you're actually fully configured at this point. So now you can go in and you can create a proxy host if you'd like. And I think that's what the majority of people will be using this for. So I went ahead and I created a domain on Cloudflare. That's what I use to manage my domains. Uh, and I set it as jellyfin.wondertech.net. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to go on your side and whatever you're using, whether it's Cloudflare or Namecheap or Porkbun, there's so many different ones. You'll need to create a CNAME DNS record that automatically points back to your local network. So your DDNS host name. As soon as that's done, you can go into the proxy hosts in Nginx Proxy Manager and you can click Add Proxy Host. Now, as soon as you do that, it's going to ask you for your domain names and it's going to ask the, for the forward host name slash IP address and the port. So the domain name that I'll be using is jellyfin.wondertech.net. So I'm going to add that in there. I'm then going to enter the IP address of my local uh, Jellyfin server and I'm going to use the port 8096 because that's what Jellyfin uses. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to save this. Now what we just did is we created a reverse proxy back to that server using that domain name. So the other thing that you can do and almost definitely should do is you can assign a SSL certificate to this. So you can navigate back into that record and then you can go to the SSL section and then click SSL certificate and request a new SSL certificate from Let's Encrypt. Um, at that time, just enter in your email address, agree to the terms of service, and it's going to automatically assign a uh, Let's Encrypt SSL certificate to that new domain name. So after you do all of that and you save it, if you navigate to that new domain that you just created, jellyfin.wondertech.net for me, you will automatically be brought to that page and it will be uh, assigned an SSL certificate. So this is now accessible outside of my network through that domain name. It's more secure, it should run better, and all web services that you'd like to connect to, you'll automatically be able to add them to this new Nginx proxy manager that we just created. Uh, you won't have to open any additional ports. You'll automatically be able to configure SSL certificates for all of them. Um, and overall, it just works, it's awesome. Uh, I've been using it for a while now. This is not the only proxy manager that exists, but I really like it. Um, I think you will as well. So if you guys have any trouble with this, any questions, please leave them in the comments. It was a pretty easy installation process, but it's more conceptual, uh, kind of explaining why we're doing things and how we're doing them. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'm happy to help out. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks, guys.